You're listening to the best of the Mantor Guy podcast as we gear up for fall, winter, and a new year into 2021. Enjoy the summer as well as this amazing episode from the past 12 months. Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Jamie Holden here, and I am so glad to have you back with us again this week. Well guys, this week we're going to continue our discussion with Mike Brown. And Mike and his family are missionaries to Honduras. They are doing an amazing work among the gangs and all the people in Honduras. And last week, Mike shared with us what God has been doing over the past three years since we last spoke to him. And in today's podcast, in part two, he shares what is going on right now and moving forward in Honduras. God is doing so much through him and his family. It is such a great interview. We're so happy to bring you part two this week, guys. So let's jump right into it. All right, Mike. So share with the listeners about the project that you're currently doing with Builders International. This is something new. I'm really excited about hearing about it. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna rapid fire a few things uh, to you about HTP, which stands for Honduras Transformation Project, if I refer to HTP. Um, let me just say that this is a God-breathed project. And what I mean by that is I stepped foot in the country. Uh, I had the opportunity to go visit a young woman who I found out was the director of a Bible institute. Now, when I say a Bible institute, I mean their Bible institute is their students are learning in, in a backyard or they're learning in alleyways or they're learning on front porches. And it's really institute is very loosely used there. So uh, as I'm as I'm interviewing this woman, the spirit of God spoke to me and said that, you know, you need to record uh, video record and then um, take some notes. And uh, and so I did uh, immediately. I started to record and I didn't know why I just started to record and ask her questions and interview. Uh, and as she's talking, I'm I'm starting to get these pictures in my mind of, of what, you know, what God is showing me. Uh, little did I know that they've been praying for this for 15 years. Wow. They didn't have land. They didn't have any anything to do with other than the students. They had about 60 students. They had the instructors and the professors, and they had the director. So the logistics were already in place. So I came home. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm all hopped up on caffeine and the Holy Spirit, and I start drawing. And I just start drawing these three-dimensional building ideas, which I'm not that. I'm not – I can draw, but I'm not a drawer, dude. And and so I knew that God was was doing this. Uh, and I get done with these drawings, and I felt like I should be making this video. So I start making this promotional video. Well, two days after I got done, you know, Don Immel contacted me, our Pendel Ministry Network superintendent, and he said, you know, do you have anything uh, we're looking for a missions project to do? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. And I sent him all of the information. We had a whole plan, a process flow worked up, everything God had already worked out. Don contacted me back and said, uh, we'd like to we'd like to pick you up as a ministry project. And I said, oh, praise God. That's incredible. What does that look like? Well, we'd like to come down and we'd like to see what what you guys are doing and what the process. We want to see the land. Mind you, we didn't even have the land. So he comes down. The group comes down. We go into the jungle. We show them the process of what these students would do. Uh, they would go through a vocational aspect of training. They would also go through relational training. They would also go through their ministry training. But at the same time, we're looking for ways to bridge the gap between the community and the church, because a lot of times the church is just this caricature. The pastor is a caricature. There's no relational aspect because the pastor doesn't really engage. So um, these people that we're bringing in off the streets, we're going to be training vocationally. They're going to be learning how to build churches. And then when these people, the, our, our, our pastors and our leaders and, and the people going through our Bible Institute training, engage them through the vocational process, the pastors who graduate three years later will receive a church, a free church plant, and then our vocational portion will build that church plant for them. So it's, it's cyclical. We want to create mm -hmm. something that, that, you know, that engages the student, engages the lost at the same time, helping our pastors learn how to mentor and disciple, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then, and then all of a sudden they're going out and having a church plant, but they have a vocational aspect train, uh, a training. They also have the opportunity and, and knowledge of how to engage people on a relational level on the street 
on the streets, excuse me. Uh, and then they have the theology. So we're sending out complete whole leaders, wow. uh, not just with the theology, but with the, the complete package. Also, we're looking uh, for the community relations aspect. Uh, and it's really cool, man, because when they came down, Jamie, we didn't have the land. Uh, about two months later, we purchased the land through the ministry network. And uh, and then we started to build. And five months later, we have a well, we have electricity, wow. we have our septic system, we have our cafeteria, we have a kitchen, we have bathrooms. And now we're on the first level, the Bible Institute itself, a two-story building that sits up about 100 people that we're going to use for children's uh, schooling as well during the times when they're not in class. So it's just really neat to see. And I got to tell you something before I, I quit rambling here. Uh, it's neat to see, Jamie, that the national church is engaged with their pastors are coming in and shoveling and working and investing, and investing their time. They're also making us food. The Pendel Ministry Network from Pennsylvania and Delaware are investing in this project. We as missionaries are. So it's really cool, again, to see that kingdom dynamic. Everybody is coming together uh, to, to showcase what God can do when the kingdom comes together. And it's exciting to see because there's progress. Five months later, we actually have a building where we, we could start school right now. So we're looking to finish uh, the building in summer. We're looking to open it to students. We have dorms to build yet. Uh, and then and then school will start. So God is doing this, man. Uh, awesome. And people are being blessed and affected. The communities around were were bones, man. They were they were it was country, right? There's nothing, just fields. Today there are houses. People are building. God has poured out His anointing on this land, and now there's houses and there's businesses going up, and people see they can see what God is doing. So I be lifted up upon the earth. I will draw all men unto me, and they're all coming to this indigenous area. And they're starting to plant and set, you know, put roots down because they can feel the power of God. So it's wow. it's just incredible. I could go on for, for, for three hours, but I won't. I know we have we have limited time. Oh, that's just so exciting to hear. You're getting me fired up here. That's just so awesome. And it's so oh. cool that they're coming. People are moving to where you're building in the middle of nowhere and they're making it a town because they're being drawn there. But that's just amazing. God's right. power is moving and <laughs> right. that's so exciting. Yeah. So what will this Bible school mean to the people of Honduras? Well, you know, we when we started to do this process, we, we said that we wanted to keep the fight on foreign soil. And, um, and what I mean by that is we see a lot of them with ideas of coming to the United States for vocation uh, and and being invested in, you know, whatever that looks like in, in, in how their, their ways of thinking. So we've, you know, we've, we've, God has provoked in us, you know, the whole idea of engaging them where they're at, investing in the needs that need to be invested. A lot of times we think, well, it's we, we want to give them the gospel. We want to show them Jesus. But at the same time, their, their immediate needs, like the feeding of the 5000, what are their immediate needs? And so what this means is an opportunity. We've had people stand outside of our gate and ask what we're doing. And then when they found out, say, how could they be a part? How can they how can they come to the vocational training? So the opportunity is, is to engage them with vocation. That's the draw. But then having the other opportunity of, of discipling them in the process. So what, what does it mean? It means we start with the ripple effect. We start with, with engaging a few. And then we start with engaging more. Uh, and then we start with engaging more. And then all of a sudden we, we are sending workers into secular jobs with the gospel. They are then utilizing their – discipleship and their training and, and their vocational training to engage other people. And we start to see a phenomenon happen. We start to see that ripple just go out and lives being changed. So um, the need for mentorship and discipleship is, is, is right in front of our faces. And we see these people, they, they desire it. So when we can, we can give that to them, they eat it up hook, line and sinker. And it's so easy to, to bring the gospel uh, to people who trust you and who have common bond with you, go through the same miseries as you. You know, it's just so neat to see that the ease, it's not hard um, to to engage people. So there you go. It means changing a nation, wow. starting with a small part in an indigenous, the most unlikely place, and then seeing God move with such power. It's incredible. That is so great. Guys, we'll be right back with the conclusion of our discussion with Mike Brown right after this break. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. 
Are you looking for a men's ministry resource that will teach your men the basics of what it means to be a man of God? Well, check out Mantor Ministries' book, Putting on Manhood. With 1 Corinthians 13 11 as the foundation, Putting on Manhood shows how to put your childish ways behind you and become the men that God designed for you to be. With the help of God's Word, the Holy Spirit, and a band of brothers, you can grow into true godly manhood. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. You can start today to put on godly manhood. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. Yep, you're listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Have you been looking for a Bible study that you can work through with your wife? Maybe you want to do devotional time with your daughter. Guys, we have the answer for you. You can buy both the men's and women's edition of Whatever It Takes for $15. This amazing deal is only available at our Mantor Ministries online store. If you go to Amazon, it is $14.99 for just the men's version. So many men are buying both versions and going through them with their wives and daughters. Do not miss this opportunity. Take advantage of this amazing deal today at MantorMinistries.com and click on the online store button. Order your copy today at MantorMinistries.com. Listen to the Mantor Guy podcast on the go via Apple Podcast and Google Play. Thanks. Hey guys, Jamie Holden here, the Mantor Guy. And you know, so often men tell me that they can't afford to use covenant eyes. And my immediate response back is, dude, you can't afford not to use covenant eyes. For 53 cents a day, you can protect every computer, every laptop, every tablet and cell phone that you and your family own from the trap of internet pornography. I tell them for 53 cents a day or $16 a month, you can make sure your little girls never stumble onto pornography as she uses Snapchat or does any internet searches while doing her homework. For 53 cents a day, you can make sure your son never falls into the trap of pornography or even sees it accidentally while online. I say for 53 cents a day, you can protect your wife from getting trapped in the trap of internet porn and protect your marriage. And I tell them for 53 cents a day, you can help break the cycle of internet pornography that's been holding in your life. Guys, you and your family, and most importantly, your walk with God cannot afford for you not to use covenant eyes. So head to mantorministries.com and hit the Covenant Eyes button in the upper right hand corner to get one month of free service. Try it out. I know you're going to love it. You're never going to regret it. Guys, do it today. You can't afford not to have Covenant Eyes be a part of your life. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God. Hey guys, Jamie Holden here, and I just want to tell you that God is moving in our prison systems. And Mantor Ministries, well, we're on the front lines, and you can help. We are giving inmates our books and resources, and guys, the testimonies we're receiving back have been amazing. You know, one person reported that they had 30 men do it, gathering, and they were 25 of them were delivered and set free from anger. Another shows how the men are weekly working together through our books and how men are growing spiritually. They're starting to have devotions and they have prayer time and Bible reading in their individual lives, and they're growing. Guys, I could go on and on. Chains of bondage are being broken among our inmates. You can help us reach even more hurting men inside our prison systems when you become a monthly financial partner with Mantor Ministries. You can become a partner with us by going to mantorministries.com slash partner and clicking on the Give Online button. Guys, together we can continue reaching men in our correctional institutions with the life-changing truth of the gospel. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Welcome back, guys, as we rejoin our interview with Mike Brown. That is so great. And we can hear how much God's doing among the people of Honduras, but what's he doing specifically in you and your family's life? Well, the truth is, is he's teaching us, uh, he's breaking us, and he's transforming our minds. He's made us so dependent on him. And I could tell you a million sob stories, a million stories of what has, you know, what has gone on in our lives. But I want to tell you this, that God has never left us nor forsaken us. And, and I want to tell you a real quick testimony. We were in the middle of a protest 
and uh, and Molotov cocktails and streets were on fire and people were, you know, it was midnight and we, we were out and there were there were guns and, you know, um, things were happening that, you know, were just really bad. And uh, and as soon as we saw a way through, we took off. My wife was behind me in our vehicle and I was in my pickup truck. And as we're going through, all of a sudden we see hordes of people to the left or to the right with Molotov cocktails, with rocks, and they're ready to throw. And all of a sudden as they wind back, they freeze and we pass through safely. Wow. And then all of a sudden chaos ensues behind us. And it was the hand of God holding back wow. the enemy from harming us. And so it's been really cool to see how God has been changing us and changing our minds and and teaching us how to love people who might not love us and and so it's it's a it's a neat dynamic my kids you know our kids jamie i appreciate you asking that you know they're on honor roll um they're they're doing really well they're amazing missionaries uh because it's not just jess and i uh, our kids are 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 amazing amazing mission filled with the holy spirit we've seen the gifts used through my daughter the gifts of healing um she's been called into ministry you know my marriage you know, we've been through our trials, uh, living overseas. It's not an easy thing, but we've also seen the hand of God in our marriage, and we've mm-hmm. we've never been more firm uh, and intact. Um, but how did we get here? Well, the Bible says in Romans 5, 3 through 5, it says not only so we glory in our sufferings, because we know suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out on our, in, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. And Second Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 says, you know, when we're weak, we're strong at that moment. So it's really uh, an amazing thing to live for God and to see how he affects our family. My son Lane is in university in Florida uh, going through the medical track and he's just straight A's. I mean, God has been and, and keeping him close. You know, that's as a parent, the one of the biggest things is my son or, or kids that aren't in, in our general vicinity um, staying close to God. And you know what he is. So I praise God for all of that. Um, we're trying to stay away from sicknesses and stuff like that, but, uh, uh, you know, we fall prey sometimes and, and get sick, but man, God is incredible. Our family is obedient and that's where nobody's special. We just simply obedient and that's where we want to stay. Wow. I just love that. That is so great to hear. I'm glad to hear how great things are going personally and with the ministry, um, Man, listening, let me tell you, Mike is somebody that I personally support, both in ministry and financially. If you're looking for a ministry that you can get behind, I encourage you, get behind Mike and the work he's doing in world missions. You will not regret it. And it's just so great to hear these testimonies. Uh, like every month we do what we can do to help and they actually see what God's doing. It's just, it, I love it. I love hearing this. It's time for our lightning round. Um, we're going to do something real quick here. I didn't even tell you we were going to do this. Um, we're going to do a lightning round. Um, what the lightning round is, I'm going to ask you a question, and you just give us the first answer you think of. Uh, it's just kind of a way for the guys Uh-oh. to get to know you a little bit better. So it's kind of a fun. It won't take long. But first question, bacon or sausage? Neither. Neither. All right. What's your favorite Rocky movie? Uh, I'd have to say Rocky I'd have to say three. Is it three when he fights the Russian? That's four. That's four, four, yeah. definitely. Training yeah. regiment just, it, it takes it above and beyond for me. All right. What's your favorite barbecued food? Oh, man, I'd have to say uh, brisket. All right. You're a Steelers fan, right? Uh, yeah. All right, so would you rather watch the Steelers lose the Super Bowl or miss the Super Bowl and they win. I miss the Super Bowl and they win. All right. If you could do a cameo in any comedy show, past or present, what would it be? Oh, buddy. Um, <laughs> wow, that's a good one, man. I uh, any comedy show. Uh, I'll go with Home Improvement. I don't know. Home Improvement's a comedy show. I'd try to pick the cleanest one I can think of. <laughs> All right, what song puts you in a good mood? Um, wow, Jamie. Uh, what song puts me in a good mood? I'd have to say uh, Save Your King by, by Hillsong, or I'd have to go with uh, God Be Praised by New Life Worship Band. Those, those put me in a pretty good mood. All right, what's the last picture you took on your phone? Let's see here. <laughs> 
The last picture I took is uh, of my of my niece. Uh, she, my sister was on FaceTime, so I took a picture of my niece today. She looks like a little nochi pasta, little <laughs> tiny thing. <laughs> All right. Jeans or sweatpants? Jeans. All right. All right. Musicals, yes or no? Yes. Oh, okay, that surprises me. <laughs> Greece, baby, all the way. Greece is my all-time favorite. Know every single line, know every single song. All right. Soft or hard ice cream? Hard. Peanut butter cup. Mm, make me hungry. And when you get to go to an amusement <laughs> park, what's your favorite ride? Uh, I'd have to say, uh, man, I'd have to say back in the day was the Batman ride. Oh, I love that ride. I love that. That was, was my all time favorite roller coaster. I love that one. Right on, man. See, I knew we had a lot in common. <laughs> Leading up to that, I just feel like Batman walking through the Batcave and going through the streets of Gotham. Yeah, I just, I dug it. Yeah. Awesome. Best roller coaster I ever rode in my life. So, all right. See, that wasn't too bad. The lightning round, was it? I wasn't too bad. <laughs> nah, I liked it. I liked it. That was good. All right. Well, you talk a lot in your testimony about hearing God speak to you. Even when you talked about the Bible school, you felt you heard God speak to you to do that. Uh, you know, most of us, we're not going to get called to go on the missions field, but how can we recognize God calling us to do something in our lives or when God speaks to us? You know, what does that practically look like for a follower of God? So I've, I've, I was praying about this because I really, I really wanted to allow God to speak through me in this. So I, I, if, if I could, I have something that I'd like to share with you. Um, everyone is different. So there's no real like three steps to receiving from the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says in Matthew that many are called and few are chosen. But why the few chosen? What does that even mean? And he was talking about the parable of the wedding banquet. And it, basically, we need to be ready and listen and accept the invitation and go when it's placed in front of us. So God will only so many times call us before he passes us by. So don't just see it happen in others' lives. Look for it in your own in every single opportunity, because I guarantee every single one of your listeners, every single, at my life, my children, he is calling. And when he, when he calls, step on the gas. So I was, I was praying about this because I, I really love how God puts this into words. Remember this, red light, yellow light, and green light, all right? The easiest to remember. If he wants to stop you, he is powerful enough to turn that light red and stop you. If he wants to slow you down, he can turn that light yellow and slow you down. Listen, he has turned that light green, and the body of Christ is still waiting for the light to change, not realizing that he's given us a green light. Step on the gas. Go with all you are until he tells you to slow down or stop. Practically, it looks like this. There are young men in your churches right now. There are young men in your life right now who are under attack. Young men and men are under attack. There are men in the church that have had a mission. You've had a mission field staring at you for years. They're staring at you. They're waiting for you. The light has changed. So what are you waiting for? Do you know where Elite started? Elite started on a hill in Millersville investing in those in and out of the church, people that have gotten out of prison, young drug addicts or, or gang or you know what have you, that has since grown to touch thousands in multiple countries. So I never meant for that to happen, I, I, but it did because the need is so great. And God's first words to me after wake up, put on your armor and go to battle, were you're gonna be a father to the fatherless. I'm speaking over all of those listening right now. Wake up. Put on your armor and get in the fight. You are a father to the fatherless. This is your call. Step on the gas until God himself tells you to stop. If you're waiting for that perfect opportunity, wait no longer. Uh, we would literally see the church, the United States, and the world change overnight if the godly men in the church and the body of Christ would don their armor and get in the fight. The potential is there. And I'm reminded of something a police officer said to me, Jamie, in, in El Salvador, in the middle of gang territory. He looked at me and he said, how did things change so fast overnight? Things can change overnight when men are activated to join the fight. God will fight for you. God will direct you. You already have what it takes. It's just an obedient heart. So I am, I am challenging you uh, 
to stand up and to look and to have your eyes open and to see that right mission field, that right for harvest, standing, sitting in your church. Maybe they're wearing the clothes that you wouldn't want them to wear, or maybe ripped jeans, or maybe hair is color. It doesn't matter because we've seen some of the greatest leaders come out of this mission field, these young men that can change the world. And I'm telling you, it will change overnight. Wow, that is powerful. Guys, soak that word in. It is so powerful. It is so true. God could, we have no idea the possibility of what God could do with us if we're just willing to let him do it. And like you said, to go right. through that green light and just keep going. If God doesn't want you to do something, he'll stop you. Keep going and going exactly. hard. And I love that. Shameless plug time. Well, Mike, how can people get involved? How can they get involved with you financially? How can they get involved with you ministerially? What? How do they connect with you here and get going with you here? Sure, sure. Well, number one, I would ask you to pray. And not just the Facebook post, I'm praying for you, right? To really pray. Uh, because we are in a spiritual battle. And we do need the prayer of the saints. We do need the prayer of the righteous. Um, and then, you know what? Um, go online. And I know the kind of one transition into that, the, the big spiritual transition into the go to go online to elite teams.net. So it's E L I T E T E A M S.net and click, you know, click on, on our information, see what we do, see if this is something that you'd like to, to get involved in, uh, to, to get involved financially, to get involved prayerfully. You know, we are, um, uh, 501 C three, we are, you know, as, as missionaries. So, uh, all of this is tax deductible, but more than that, you're investing in the kingdom. So uh, we, you know, it's it's a very easy process. Um, and uh, and also, if you'd love to start an elite program stateside, uh, this is not my ministry. This is God's ministry. So there's an opportunity for you to get involved. If your church is like, hey, this is something we can do. I'd like to know more about it. Contact me, Mike at EliteTeams.net. Uh, we can talk about how this would look. You know, if you're interested uh, like I said, we like to work as a kingdom, uh, as a kingdom of uh, our body of believers. So we're also looking for volunteers. Maybe you're good at shirt design. Maybe you're good at media. Maybe you're good at graphics, um, publication of our manual. Uh, you know, if you feel like you can contribute in any way, we, we're not doing it for money. We're doing it for souls. So if you're like, man, I could really jump on board. This is all I have to offer. It's not just all you, it's, it's, there, that's a big thing that you have to offer is you, is your, is your talents and your abilities. So we're always looking for partners. If it's something that you are like, you know what, I could get involved in that. Yeah, yeah and, and contact me and see how you would like to get involved because we'd love to have you. We'd love to see how this would look in the context of, of the U.S. Um, we're trying to to transform. Uh, we're malleable. You know, I understand insurance is all of that, uh, those other things. So we're, we're malleable as a ministry. It's the heart behind it. It's what we do behind it. Doesn't necessarily mean you'll be swinging from ropes like we are down here. But uh, if you have something, please connect with me. Guys, I really do encourage you, take the time, pray about how you can get involved, pray for him and his family daily. Um, if you can give financially, give. Whatever it is you can do, this is a ministry worth supporting. I 100% endorse this ministry. I'm completely behind it, and I hope you'll get behind it too. So, Well, Mike, as we wrap up, what is one practical piece of advice that you'd have for the men just to help them grow in their walk with God? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I love you guys and um, you, you inspire me uh, and God has a purpose for your life. But men, if you don't desire to know God, you won't find him. This life of adventure, miracles and faith is for everyone. But it didn't start until I took my one foot out of the world and started walking all in for God that I saw the dead raised back to life. I saw the blind see and I saw the lost found. So it's self-examination time. If you're listening, write down this verse, Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what the will of God is, his perfect, good, and pleasing will. Get your mind out of the world and open your eyes to God's will for your lives and for the lives of your family members and the lives of those young people you'll be engaging in the church. Take that finger that you might be pointing at all the circumstances 
you believe are forming you and turn that finger until it's pointing right back at yourself and really examine your motives, really examine your life and be honest. You want to see change? It starts with you. Once those things are exposed, be strong, place them before God, repent, grab another brother to engage in and sharpen you and stand up, put on your armor, Ephesians 6.10 and join the fight. Guys, we were taking back ground. Do not let the enemy lie to you. We are going to see big things happen in 2020, and it's going to be as the body of Christ. I believe in you. I know that Jamie does, and I love him for his heart. And you know what? We're going to see God move this year. Guys, if that does not fire you up, you're kind of dead inside while we're praying for you. <laughs> that is just so powerful <laughs> that you should be on fire right now listening to this. Uh, I just love Mike. I love his heart. If you want any more information about how you can connect with Mike, visit EliteTeams.net. And like I said, he's a good friend. I support him wholeheartedly. You want to be a part of what him and his wife and his family are doing in Endorse. You want to join their team. So, Mike, thank you so much for taking time with us here today. Just all else you wanted to say? I just wanted to add, if you'd like to follow the progress of HTP on Facebook, it's Mike, the letter N, Jess Brown. That's our Facebook. We post Elite, and then that'll give you the opportunity to like our Facebook Elite Teams page, Elite Teams, and then it's at Facebook. Yeah, guys, check that out. It's exciting to see their updates and everything God's doing. And Mike, thank you so much for taking the time today all the way from Honduras to be with us, and it's always great to get to talk to you. My friend, I love you, brother, and I appreciate it. Thank you for the time. The Mantor Guy's final thought. I love what Mike had to say in his final word of advice there, and I hope that you took it to heart. He spoke about how we need to follow God's call because God will only ask so many times before calling someone out. And guys, this is so true. I've seen it firsthand. You know, my dad had a call in his life to help men break free of their past and follow God wholeheartedly. He was called to do the ministry I'm doing, but he refused the call. He refused to follow God and do what God called him to do. He refused to just make changes in his life, to obey God, to follow God wholeheartedly. And, you know, God kept calling him over and over, and he kept saying no. So God called me to do what my dad was supposed to do. God gave me the call and he gave me the anointing. And guys, God will not force anyone to follow him. But let me tell you, your life will never have the blessing and the favor and the joy and happiness you could have when you refuse to answer God's call. It could be so good. God's call is always so amazing. You won't have that benefit when you don't answer God's call. Guys, I hope you heard Mike's words and you floor it through the green light and keep on going. If God wants you to stop, he'll stop you. If he wants to slow you down, he'll flash the yellow, but keep on flooring through the green and do what God has called you to do. Well, guys, we're out of time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you giving us your time to listen. Um, thank you so much to Mike once again, as we conclude here, for giving us this amazing interview that we actually broke down into two parts so you could hear the entire thing. Guys, we'd love to have you go to Apple Podcast, iTunes, Google Play. You know, subscribe, leave a five-star rating and review. More men can find out about this podcast and be encouraged and strengthened and grow in their walk with God when you do that. Also, make sure to head to MantorMinistries.com and check out the remaining dates for our Mantor conferences. God has been moving mightily at the Mantors in 2020. Chains are being broken. Men are being set free. Make sure you get to your local Mantor conference. Get dates, location, speaker information, registration information. All that's available at MantorMinistries.com. You can also check out all of our books and our resources. You can check out our monthly newsletter. And guys, you can even read the first chapter in our brand new book, Whatever It Takes, for free at MantorMinistries.com. So check out the website. But once again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next week on the Mantor Guy podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy podcast. Be sure to visit MantorMinistries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our Mantor conferences. Hey guys, Mantor Guy Jamie Holden here. 
Are you looking for a speaker at your church or for your men's breakfast, your next men's event, men's retreat, or men's conference? Well, why not bring me in to speak? God has been moving among men as I've been sharing an encouraging word of freedom and victory. We're seeing lives change, men being saved, people being set free, and guys, chains are being broken. So if your church has hurting men and women, contact me to come share this encouraging word of hope and victory to help you grow in your walk with God. One more thing before I wrap up this week, guys. You need to head to CovenantEyes.com and sign up today to protect you and your loved ones from the many traps awaiting you on the internet. You know, I am a Covenant Eyes user. I just signed my 69-year-old father up and put Covenant Eyes on his phone and his laptop. I believe in it. It's an amazing tool. It helps you stay pure online. Guys, I encourage you to try it today. If you use the code MANTOR, you get 30 free days. That's 30 free days. What do you have to lose? So head to CovenantEyes.com. Try it today. Like I said, what do you have to lose, guys? The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.